Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I am still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty, and if I've done my editing job properly, I should be in black and white right now. Our very twenties. I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Demille. Anyhow, you will have seen. Oh, gosh. I hate when I get watery eyes and I'm not wearing waterproof mascara. Right, let's get this intro done quick before I start looking like Alice Cooper from School's Out video. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description, that this is my first impressions with the Nomad Shanghai palette. Now this is a gift from one of my lovely 4F family from Shari. Thank you my darling, it's much appreciated. Um, but sadly you can't get this. It's been discontinued. I will explain why in the film. So, if you want to find out why this has been discontinued, what I'm going to blither on about at you this time, and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Sammy the Sloth is here to tell you. It's that time. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. Get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Random banging from outside from one of the neighbours. No idea which one it is. But, look what arrived. I would have shown you the outside of this box in the intro and uh, this is of course the Nomad Shanghai palette which sadly is discontinued already um, I'm not I don't entirely understand why I did message them and ask them because I, I just woke up one morning and checked Instagram and they said, we're really sorry, we've taken what you've said on board and we're going to discontinue the palette. I'm like, what? Mine hadn't even arrived at this point. It had only been launched like, I don't know, a week? Maybe? Less than that? Um, and they said that they'd had feedback that it was culturally appropriating. I... I may be being really ignorant, and if I am, please explain to me, politely, in the comments, how this is cultural appropriation, because as far as I can see, this is, all of their other palettes have been destination palettes, and it's a celebration of that destination. Let me read you the blurb from the back of it. On the back of it, they've actually got... The, I don't know if that's Chinese, Mandarin, um, what it is, but it's got the names of the shadows in the predominant language I assume used in Shanghai. Uh, and it says, Shanghai is a city that embodies one of China's most ancient philosophies, the dualism of yin yang. Seemingly opposite yet complementary forces that create completeness come to life in this mega megalopolis. Shanghai seeks the future without forgetting the past. West of the central Huangpu River is historic Shanghai with pagoda temples and 1920s European architecture from the time when the city was known as Paris of the East. On the east bank is the future of Shanghai with neon lights, looming skyscrapers and focus on what's to come. 
High Pai, the avant-garde East meets West culture of this marvellous city, is a symbol of diversity and inclusiveness with acceptance of both Chinese and foreign cultures, the contrary yet inseparable yin yang. And when you open the palette up, you have same design, and this actually opens gatefold which means it opens like that years of working in print sorry let me just take this little plastic condom thing off and you can see it's split yin and yang this side is all mats with a shimmer in the middle this side is all shimmers with a mat in the middle because obviously if you the yin yang symbol Hello. Um, the reason you have a spot of one colour, usually yin and yang is, is black and white, so you'll have a white spot in the black half and a black spot in the white half to symbolise how one is not complete without the other. There's always a part of one in the other. That's why symbolically it's used to represent relationships. Because it's like saying, wherever you go, you have a piece of my heart. That's how I view it. That's why I got the yin yang tattoo. Um, this side is the traditional, traditional, um, new, more neutral mats to represent, as they said, the pagodas, Paris of the West, etc., like Paris of the East. And then this side is the shimmers, which are all bright neons, with the black in the middle for the night sky, um, to represent modern Shanghai. So I'll read some of the the names of the shades. What I'll do, I'll read. Let me just close that side. I'll read this side first, and then I'll do the same with this side. Okay. So you've got, I'm probably going to mispronounce some of these, Long Hua, Balance, Puxi, Snake, Sun, Yin, Fairmont Palace, Ying Pai and Bund on this side. And on this side you have Pudong, Harmony, Golden Philosophy, Yang, Moon, Dragon, oh good lord. Lu Lucia Zui, probably pronouncing that really wrong, I'm so sorry. Hai Pai and Oriental Pearl. So I. Maybe I just don't know enough about Shanghai itself. You know, is it, is it one of these terms that are culturally appropriating? Shanghai, I, I, to me this feels like a celebration of the city, which is what all of their destination palettes have been. They've been celebrations of the culture and the architecture and the peoples of whatever the destination is. Um, I'm really, really upset that if you hadn't already ordered this by the time they discontinued it, you're not going to be able to get it in this format. However, I did ask them would they be reusing um, the shades that they've got in here in other palettes and they said there's a possibility they'll do that. Obviously they'll need to look at uh, repressing because these have got pagodas, yin yang, a snake on that one, dragon on that one. I'm um, not entirely sure what that particular symbol is. If you look, I don't know if you can see on the red there. I'm not sure what that is. Is it meant to be a... It's got like three feet at the bottom of it. Is it, is it a deity or is it a hookah pipe or... 
I don't know, but I absolutely adore this palette. It was a gift from one of my 4F babies from Shari. Uh, she spoils me, she really does. And I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it at least once on my channel. If you'd like to see it more, obviously let me know. Now, that being said, this remains a teaching channel. So I zoom in really close. It's just my eyes on screen. I do this for a couple of reasons. One, so that you can see what's going on, even if you're watching me on a phone screen without your glasses on. Um, but also it's easier for me to cut out times when I wince with pain without making it as obvious that I've had to, to cut a section out. When I do cut sections out, I don't cut any blending out, trust me, because when I'm wincing, I'm not blending. Um, I also go at a speed that most beginners can keep up with. Again, chronic pain stops me from going super fast, but feel free to use the speed widget and speed me up if you want me to go a little bit quicker. However, if you are a beginner, I will do each eye in real time, close up, uh, at a speed that hopefully you should be able to follow. Now, last thing to say before I get to play with that palette, and I'm just itching to get into that palette. It arrived yesterday, but it arrived too late for me to get daylight swatches. Oh, swatches. Put swatches up. Um, it arrived too late for me to put to, to get daylight swatches. So um, I had to resist and not play with it until this morning, which was so difficult. So difficult. Um, a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself mistakenly think or are mistakenly told that they have hooded lids. Now, even big beauty gurus get this wrong. So I'm going to insert a clip which talks you through how to work out which eye type you have and the best method of application or the workaround for applying your makeup to get the best longevity out of it and the best initial finish. Uh, that is very up close and personal. It's just my eyes. As a, as a trade-off with being that close, there are times when I look down to clean my brush or add more pigment and I'm still talking, so you get a lovely flash of my widow's peak. You're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> but once the clip is finished, I'll be back to play with this and I cannot wait. So, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. 
if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with one of my Royal and Low Nickel Chic Pro Crease Brushes which is basically a fluffy round brush even though that looked triangular just then. There we go, round brush. And I know people are expecting me to go into the green to start off with, but I've done a lot of green looks lately, so I'm going to go in, brace yourself, put a hot drink down, to the neutrals. You okay? Got your breath back? Okay. Right, I'm going to start off by going into yin which is a really lovely soft sort of it's not taupe it's it's like a dusky mauvey taupey kind of a grey taupe maybe no grey mauve I don't know I like it um, as always I hold the brush at the very end and if the handle is long enough brace the end of it in your palm to stabilise this end. This way we put as little pressure as possible on our lids. And I will be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is twofold. I'm 46 and I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves but I know slim teenagers with the same problem it can be genetic and if you just rely on the windscreen wiper that's when you get your lid overlapping and you get those telltale white lines by doing the Viennese waltz blend you are gently manipulating the lid first in one direction and then the other and hopefully eliminating any white spots I always start at the outside because it's much easier if you do suddenly get a dollop of pigment it's much easier to sort out when your nose isn't in the way 
So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brown. And just start laying this pigment down. See, this is my this is my favourite sort of if I'm doing a neutral look, this is the shade that I want for my transition shade. This kind of greyish, cool toned mauve rather than a brown. Um, I don't mind taupe, but I prefer this. I just think it works better with my skin tone and with the colour of my eyes. So I'm super happy that this is in here and that blended like a dream. I struggle with this eye here and here to get um, pigments to blend well because I have super dry parts there thanks to my eczema. That's so nice though. So nice. And I'm going to do the same this side. The reason I don't do one eye and then come back and do the other one is because I can have problems with my eyes swelling up slightly, the eyelids puffing slightly. Um, not because of conjunctivitis, but in a similar manner to conjunctivitis. It's just part of my fibre, I get random puffiness all over the place, which is just great. Um, so there are times when I do the same shape both sides, but then when I relax my brows and look forward, they look like a different shape. And it's, if you've put all of the other colours in already, sometimes you can sit there and think, I know they don't look like a match, but I can't work out why. Whereas if you do each colour before moving on to the next, you can catch any discrepancies like that. That's so soft and so pretty and blended like a dream. I do wish there were some slightly darker mattes in here though. Um, yeah, there's this, this. They're quite, there's only one really or two that are even slightly, I mean, that would disappear on a lot of people's skins. So really there's only that, that green that deeper skinned people could use. Um, I've cleaned the brush off on a clean washcloth and I'm going to dip into, I'm going to dip into balance. I'm going to do that just slightly below where I put in. And just buff that along. And kind of blend those two together. We get a nice seamless blend. Don't worry, colour is coming. I'm normally much more colourful. If this is your first time watching me, I really, really do neutrals. Um, mainly because there's enough channels out there doing neutrals and not enough doing colours for my liking. Did you see how easily those two just blended together? I didn't even have to think about it. That was... oh... I do love Nomad's formula. Just so nice. Right, I'm going to go down to a slightly smaller blending brush now. And I'm going to dip into Ying Pai. Bit more of a kick up in this pan, but I think it's because I've gone for a smaller brush. 
I'm going to concentrate this initially just on this outside edge here. If you've moved your crease, this is the colour that you're going to put through your new crease line. I always put the darkest colour through the crease line or through your adjusted crease line because darker colours go backwards and lighter colours come forwards. So if you are having to move and create a new crease for your eye, having the deeper colour running through there will just help trick people's eyes when they're talking to you um, into thinking that that part of your eye goes back further. I'm just going to run that through the crease there. And one of the things that I like to do, because I have very watery eyes and I can't always do a liner, is I'll use my darkest shade that I'm using through the crease and just flick in a straight line from the corner of my eye here, aiming to roughly where, just past where the end of my brow will finish. And then add a bit of a scoopy bit there. Because by doing that, I'll tidy that up with some micellar water shortly. But by doing that, you're adding, let me just grab a pad of micellar water on and show you what I mean. By doing that, you're adding a wing using powder. A, it's great if you're learning how to do a wing because you now have a line to follow. But also, can you see the difference that makes on the eye shape? It just makes the edge of this eye look lifted and more awake than this side. Good little trick, that one. Now with this side, when you see me do the, um, the shimmer, I break my own rule of not pulling your eyelid around. Unfortunately, I have to. Because do you see this super deep creasing just here? That was caused by um, the ophthalmic hospital pulling my eye around when I was five years old, six years old trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly and as a consequence I now have much looser skin juice there and if I don't slightly stretch the lid when I'm applying the shimmers here what happens is no matter how carefully I do it the shimmers end up packing loosely into the crease and then throughout the day as the shimmer dries and I'm moving my eyes around it ends up coming down into my eyes and down my face and that's both painful and kind of ruins your makeup look too. You see how easily that blended. I just I love Nomad's formula, basically. And again, people often say to me, "Why don't you use a tape to do that?" Well, because if the tape is sticky enough stop powder from going under the edge of it <clears throat> then when you take it off it's going to pull the skin so I much prefer doing it this way now I'm going to use 
um, a little flat brush like this to apply the colours, the shimmers to my lid because it's nice and easy to get into this inner corner. I wet shimmers regardless of brand. I'm going to be using fixing spray today. You can use any kind of moisture. Mary Badescu, MAC, you know, moisturising sprays. You can use priming sprays, setting sprays, finishing sprays. Um, you can even save a bottle and just put fresh water in each day. But what you mustn't ever do, ever do, is put a wet brush into a pressed pigment because you will end up killing the pigment. Enough chatting, I want to put some colour on my lids and those of you who know me, there are two shades in there which are the colour of my wedding dress and pretty much the colour of my bridesmaids dresses. So guess which two colours I'm going to put on my lid. Yeah. Right, I'm going to start off with Oriental Pearl which is the colour of my bridesmaids dresses. Can't believe I've been married seven years this year. Been with him for nine. Right, now, the ferrule is now wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in place. Otherwise you're going to have a very expensive stick. So, let's start applying this, shall we? Ooh. Now I know my little, my wee Viking friend, my wee Scottish Viking, likes this particular shade. So I know he's going to be glad that I'm using it. That's just Darling, would you look at that? I don't do cut creases as a rule or put um, glitter glue down the first time I use the pigments because I like to see how much opacity each shade has when you apply it with a brush. Right dried that brush off and now I'm going back in to do the other eye. Now obviously as I said I do have to break my own rule with this eye but I will show you what I do to cause as little additional damage as possible. Okay. So I gently stretch the lid out but only as far as it takes to straighten out the creases. And I then apply the pigment as quickly as I can to the area. Get it really well blended onto the lid and then gently let go again. And then any additional pigment I just put on as usual. You can see there's a lot more movement to this lid than there was the other lid because it has, you know, it's, it's had additional damage basically. It's that simple. And now I'm going to go into the colour that I really, really struggled with pronouncing. Lujazu? Lujazui? Lujazui? I don't know. The purple. Because that is the colour of my wedding dress. Purple and black, and I loved it. I stopped traffic, literally, came out of the church and was standing out the front having the photos taken. And literally, cars were stopping and people were getting their phone out and taking photographs before continuing. So, goodness knows how many people have actually got photographs of my wedding day. But, uh, yeah, I like to be different. 
and my dress was unique because I designed it and found a dressmaker to create it for me. And on the back it had my new surname embroidered in black crystals on the train. Right, okay. I'm going to apply this to the second non-pigmented part of my lid or the second third I suppose it would be, wouldn't it? And I'm just going to blend the two colours together where they meet just so there's not a sharp line and then just use the tip of the bristles to blend that lightly into the mat on the end. How pretty, pretty, pretty is that? Right, dry the brush off, go back in, pick up more pigment to do the other eye. I do really love this colour though. Go on, how many of you were thinking I was going to do green today? When they saw me open that palette. That's so bloody pretty. I really like that. Hmm. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and whatnot on, and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can chat to you again, but for you, sweetie pie, it will be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right after this wibbly wobbly bubbly bit. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Right, okay. Uh, did my usual soap brows and used the Ying Pai this grey through the brows. I quite like. Steely, steely brows. Um. <coughs> I'm going to go in with a flat topped brush. See, I normally like to put something colourful underneath my eye. But the only colourful mattes are green ones. So I think I'm going to go into one of the shimmers, go into High Pay, which is the blue. I'm just going to run that. along my lower lash line like so lush oh that is pretty and then I'm going to go in with my flat topped brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's, it basically it's flat top but chunky, so it's great for getting up under your lower lashes. And shall I go in for a shimmer and be brave? Or shall I go in for a matte? No, I'm going to go in for a shimmer. I'm going to go in for Yang because I used Yin. So I feel like I need to use Yang, which is the pink. Just tap that off though, because I don't want shimmer getting down my face. I'm just going to use that to lightly buff along that lower lash line. 
to soften and maybe at it sort of yay turns it a bit purpley colour theory for the win when my eyes are particularly watery I can't put anything in the waterline but I always finish my eyes off like this because I just I like to see something under the eye as well I just think it finishes the look off nicely hmm. and now I'm going to grab this is a lip brush I bought it from eBay I think back in the early 90s so it's probably getting on for 30 years old now so I'm going to go into Sun and pop that just up under the tail of my brow there. Oh, that's pretty. I might try that as a highlight today, actually. It might have a little bit too much opacity, though, looking at it. Yeah, I think that's... Not often you'll hear me say something's too opaque, but for a highlight, I think that will be. And then I think let's go into Golden Prosperity for the inner corner. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, hello, matron. Oh, that's glorious. That just makes me feel like spring's coming. Oh. Happy days, happy days, folks. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to put some mascara on, some highlight, some setting spray. I've nearly finished my second bottle of orange creamsicle. Um, I do have a code with Gerard, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to have it for though because where I don't push it that much, uh, I've not had as many sales as I think they would have liked to have seen. So uh, make the most of it while you can, all my codes are listed in the description box and they tell you whether I earn from them or not. Um, I should do highlight, mascara, lippy and I'll be back with my finished look and my first impression thoughts on the pack. Uh, for you again instant I am back mascara is the Clarins Supra volume that my lovely friend Heather sent me the highlight believe it or not is this one combination of this and this on the high point so glad I picked this up from Depop. Really is fantastic. But then it's Italian and it's baked, so they know what they're doing out there when it comes to highlighters. The lippy is my Uoma Angela because well I had to. Come on. And this is my first look with no. What do you think? You like? I really like. Okay. First impressions. I'm going to take it in two halves. Starting with this half. Um, I love the concept of the yin and the, yin and the yang with all mattes with a shimmer and then this side all shimmers with a matte. Love that. I just wish they'd included some deeper mattes. Um, because a lot of these, if you're more than, I don't know, NC35 on MAC, this is, it's really not going to show up that well on your skin. Um, I mean certainly that one, that one and that one. 
it, it's light to medium skin only, isn't it really? So I think that's a shame, but then again, Shanghai, China, they tend to have a, a light medium skin tone, so has it been done because of that? I don't know. Um, but I would like to have seen a couple of deeper mattes in here. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm pale as uncooked chicken to quote Teresa is dead. Um, so I can use all of those and they're all going to show up, which is great. Actually, that one might not. That's a bit skin tone coloured for me. Um, but I do wish that... Why am I saying this for? You can't get this palette now anyway. But I think when they when they reuse these colours in a different palette, with different names, I'd like to see them include maybe some deeper mattes so that people with more melanin can enjoy this palette the same way that I can. Now moving on to the fun side. This side, the colourful side. I love this. Um, I've used what, one, two, three, four, five of the shades so far. And I really like them. They're super soft, they blend very well, there's not a huge amount of fallout from them, wet or dry. Um, good opacity to the ones that I've tried so far. I'm I'm really impressed. I'm looking forward to trying all of the other shades as well. So if there's any specific shades that you want to see me use, let me know in the comments box below. And also let me know, you know, would you have chosen this you probably wouldn't would you have chosen this combination of colors if if you'd if you'd just picked this up what look would you have gone for what colors would you have chosen i'd be really interested to find out what what calls to different people you know um in terms of quality though it's the usual really high standard. The mattes were super soft, super buttery, blended. You, you didn't even really need to think about it. They, they almost blended themselves without you having to do anything, which is great. Um, as I said, the shimmers, very little fallout, if any, wet or dry. And from the ones that I've tried so far, great opacity to them. So you're not necessarily going to need a glitter glue or to cut your crease to get that pow um, that you're looking for. So yeah, I mean, obviously I don't know how well it's going to wear, but if it's anything like the Tokyo palette that Shari also sent me, um, then I would say it's going to be absolutely great. Um, I don't get, even with the pastels in, in Tokyo, I don't get fading through the day which is awesome so I would imagine that uh, this is going to be the same kind of formula and will last through the evening but I will let you know if there's any differences to that um, if you're one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing people but they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. It's also worth checking your notification status, because uh, mine keep getting knocked back to personalised rather than all, which means I get no notifications whatsoever. If, however, you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this is uh, pretty much what you're going to get in most of my films, which is me blithering at you in what I'm told is a very calming, soothing voice um, about important things, not important things. My brain occasionally goes off for a wander by itself and then comes back again. Sometimes it takes longer than others to come back and they can be interesting pauses where my brain you can see the hamster wheel going round desperately trying to find the right words but 
if you've enjoyed this, it'd be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube and it is super easy to do. You hit that red subscription button and you turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications. In the hope that YouTube will actually send them. In the meantime, as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am perched, I have a rather ample back catalogue of films you can watch. Do you see what I did there? Do you see? Hmm? Did you appreciate that? No? Okay, moving on. Seriously though, I do have an awful lot of films that um, you can watch if you need a little bit of me time, a little bit of chill out time. Uh, I've got first impressions like this, I've got other tutorials, product reviews, challenges, collabs. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So as I've said now, for what feels like eons, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy, and just indulge yourself for a bit until you feel a bit more relaxed. Right, my lovely ones. Normally this is the point that I would say whether or not I would approve you buying the palette or suggest you buy the palette or recommend you buy the palette but I can't do that because the palette's not available. However, if there are specific shades you want it might be worth emailing Nomad asking whether they're going to sell singles. They may choose to, they may not but if they get feedback on what the most popular colours are then hopefully they'll be included in whatever their next palette will be. Uh, love again to Shari for sending me that. You, you spoil me. You really do. Uh, I, have, I have a couple of makeup fairy godmothers uh, and I appreciate all of them very much indeed. Right, before I start crying, because this is not waterproof mascara, all that remains for me to say as ever, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.